Okay, so look, <clears throat> just to get started here, what I did was I came down 120 because the biggest radius is 100 and I came in about 120 so that I've just got a bit of room but I want to leave space over here for my follower displacement diagram. <clears throat> so just came down and in 120, drew the camshaft there which is 20. Now, next move, just checking the measurements there. So we know that the radius of this part, there's a dwell of radius 100. So I'm just going to mark that down there, my radius 100. And it dwells from 90 to 180. So... So that's an easy enough thing to do to get started. Now, the next thing I know there then is the down 12 and over 40. So down 12 mil. And 40 over from the center is this center here. And that's the radius for the rest of the cam at this side. So that's just an arc. So that now is the nearest approach. So what I'm going to do there now is I'm going to just Take that across. I'll just draw a small bit heavier now than I would normally do so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to mark up the 100 as well. So that is the rise and fall of my cam is here now. And that there is the nearest approach. So my next move there now is I was told there then that use 12 millimeter spacings. So that's gonna take me 120 mils or 12, 144 mil. Now I know the last part of this is simple harmonic motion because I, from reading the question there, so I'm going to need a semicircle, but I'll just put the semicircle I think over on the other side there. Uh, I hope that doesn't confuse people now. So I'm going to mark on my 12 spacings of 12 millimeters here. So 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72, 84, 96, 108. Okay, so that there, and just put on our lines here then as normal. So this question was unusual in that it was a combination. You're kind of working backwards. So I'll just number this now. So Okay, so there's our follower displacement diagram. So we know that it starts here at 90. Now, I, because I have half the cam drawn over here, I can draw 
have to follow our displacement diagram. And not that I even need this, but I'm going to finish this circle here just to keep it tidy. I'm going to finish that outer circle there just for doing the spokes. And I'm going to put on my spokes over here at the 30 and 60. Again, I'll just draw them heavier now than I normally would in the hope that they'll be coming out in the video. Just go a bit heavier. Okay, so there's all my spokes and I'm going to remember this now and seeing as this cam turns, now they told you in the thing that that's not degrees. So this is 30 degrees, 60, 90, because you were given the 90 now. So we'll just lay out our degrees here from the follower. So our sizes here match the follower displacement diagram. So we know that's zero. So I'm going, we're working backwards here now. Normally we take the heights for the cam off here and transfer them over here. So working backwards, there is our Height for 30, 60, 90, which is the full size. So that looks pretty straight there, but anyway. So then it dwells from 90 to 180, it dwells. So just trying to set square and then, okay. So there's a slight bit of a curve there, all right? Just a slight bit. So now I'm gonna just draw that. So. So that's the dwell part from 90 to 180. Just adjust this camera there now a tiny bit. Okay, so the dwell is from 90 to 180 here. So I was saying there now we're going to be working backwards there now from 180 back to 360. It's simple harmonic motion. So I need a semicircle here. So I was saying there, I was keeping it. I'm going to put the semicircle at the left hand side. So I'm going to just bisect this. There's my center. Draw a semicircle. Break this up then with spokes here at 30 and 60. Just transfer those heights back here. So it's going to be down one. Down to center. So 
Fourth. Fifth and bottom. So I'll just mark these in with pen there, just to come out a bit brighter or heavier. Put that there. Now I'll just draw that part of it from here. So there's our follower. So this is all simple harmonic motion, which is the semicircular construction. And now I'm just taking heights from here as normal. That's my height for 210. Three hundred now if you want it if you want it there if there's a pretty steep there's a steep enough change there now two forty to two seventy so I could just take a height exactly in the middle of this that would be just in the middle there it'll just give you a rough idea and i could go and bisect that as well but it'll be good enough so there's my points for the curve here so again between 210 and 240 there, between 210 and 240, I might just take a distance halfway is there. So that's about in the middle. Okay, so that there is my cam and follower displacement diagram. And I don't know if I should or not try and follow her, but I'll just throw one in there. And so obviously that's a knife edged follower. So as I said right at the beginning, what was different about this question is you drew half the can, set up the follower displacement diagram using that, and then use the construction here to get your follower heights and transfer them back. So you were working backwards I suppose and then forwards or whatever way you want to think about it. So I just flip the sheet over and I'm going to set up um, B of that question there on this side of the sheet. So I, I'm going to pause that now while I set this up because uh, you'll figure that much out, I imagine. Okay, so maybe I will record this actually, all right? So circle of 40, come over 70, 40 more. Now what I need to do there then is I need to set the compass here to 56. Okay, so I need an arc from here of 56. 
and I'm after stepping up here a height of 31 on this So I can heavy this in here. And I've got I'm just marking a distance here of twenty six. Now I, I could probably just go perpendicular there, but it doesn't say that it's perpendicular so i'm just going to make sure there by marking an arc of 26 but i'd say it's fairly close to 90 degrees all right so this here our bucket and this point here is up a height of 15 which I measured earlier now I'm going to come across here horizontally go up in line with the right hand side here now point R is 40 above the So that's point R. So then I'm gonna come horizontally forty four. God damn it, that's diameter, not radius. I'm just going to change that. Okay, just changing this. So that's our center there. through that again over from the center up from the right hand side so up 40 then horizontally 44 brings me to here that's down 10. So that's point S. So that's that and that joins to this point that's up 15. Okay, so that is set up. Now what's happening here is two things, okay? So first of all, I'm going to just bring over the center here. Okay. 
just go off there 30 degrees so that's my distance there for each movement now what is happening is that digger is going reversing here moving to, to the right so just gonna mark the positions of the center of the wheel for half a revolution okay so one three six so the wheel is moving in this direction so that is the center now what is happening is as that happens the bucket is going lifting up around or through 60 degrees so I'm just going to find a protractor there now now I'm going to leave R where it is for the time being and I'm going to calculate the heights so if it moves through 60 degrees in six equal movements it's gonna go 10 20 40 degrees 40 degrees 50 degrees 60 degrees so just swing an arc here so this linkage and I'm just going to mark the angles here now so that's going to be S after 10 degrees 20 30 Okay, so that's there are all the different positions for S. Now this angle is going to stay the same here. This angle here. So I'm going to just now do I care about the angle is the next question. So when this rotates up, it's going to stay the same distance from R so that's also going to move up in an arc and it always has to be this far from S so I'm going to mark the six positions of three So I'm just going to dot these now. So that's R. That is R. So that's going to be R position one and two, three and four and five and six. Okay, so there are all the positions of R as the digger rises and because then we're told that PQ stays horizontal throughout, so they're basically, they're all the heights for P. Or sorry, no, they're not, what am I saying? Um, we've got all, all our positions for, so, and that stays horizontal throughout. which means that P is going to be 15 below them as it moves every time. So I'm going to just mark now 
Now I'm torn between moving or but no, I'm going to just mark 15 below every one of these. So what is the fastest way to do that? I'll just change colors here. <coughs> so I'm just going to get a red to mark this dot here. So that's down 15. Just drawing the line here, I think actually. So they're all the final heights of P. So I'm going to bring along P at the first height must be here. Now, the wheel moves that far with every uh, one twelfth of a turn, so there's like half a turn, there's six of those, but actually I'm going to just move or so if the wheel moves along at that, at those increments, or up above is also going to actually or I want to move because that's the center of the rotation. So there are my six movements of R. Now, the distance from R sorry, this point is T. Ah. There we go. That there is point T. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just find the different positions for T along here. So when R moves over one and the bucket moves up one, we now know that T is going to this height. Just draw some light lines here now for the different heights of T. So this here is T1. T at position one, and then that's T at position two, T at position three, so T at four. T at five and T at six. So every time it moves a sixth, the height moved up a sixth. So there are my positions for T's. 
and since the bucket stays horizontal the distance from T to P will always be the same and we know then so it has to be from one it has to be at this height so the distance from T to P is that much and the height just extend these to so that's my first one there I'll mark that now in red again I think it may be green or something different so there is P in position 1 so there's the the height drop so from uh, from position so from T2 there's P in position 2 Tree high tree T four it says height four. Five is at height five. T six. So that there is my locus as the bucket rises and the digger reverses back. So again there, uh, how did we do it? Well, this moved by 60 degrees. So I broke it into six different heights there of 10, 20, 30, 40, 60, 50, 60. There's the movement was broken up into six here as well, moving in this direction. So I found the six different positions for T. And then just used the 15 millimeter height drop there. And the fact that the distance from T to P is always the same because of uh, the the bucket staying horizontal so that doesn't change and it wouldn't change anyway I suppose because it's swiveling around there but uh, yeah so that was it.